Now today I'm going to tell you a story live on camera. And this is a story I'll make it up as I go along. Welcome to Northworthy Sagas and Stories. So I've got some idea in my mind what the story is about. It is about a infamous character called Dave the Cat. And Dave is a Viking cat and he goes around and he has adventures. And of course one day when Dave passes away he will go to Cat Valhalla as I often say. And this is dedicated to Irish cat Sim Sim and also to my cats that passed away, Charlie, Monty and Titchy. So once upon a time in those good old days of the Vikings and the Saxons there was this mysterious and wonderful supernatural character called Dave. Dave was awesome. Dave was your best friend. He'd always come and meet you and he could talk. This was very unusual for a cat. I'm sure you agree. And so one day, Dave, the Viking cat, as I shit on my Viking shield and hope I don't fall over, went to a long house. He knew. And went to get some milk. He loved his milk. Oh yes, and uh, a bit of mead now and again. Not too much mead, because Dave didn't like getting drunk. Because let's face it, getting drunk in the Dark Ages is not always a good thing. And so he went in this long house, and he saw a man with a long white beard, a stranger to the area. And he was telling a story about this treasure buried in a mound that he wanted to go and dig up. Well, Dave thought, well, oh, this sounds like a fun adventure to me. And so he went up to the man with the long white beard and the great cloak and the woolen hat on his head. The man was well tooled up. He had a good sword and a good axe and a good shield. And he says, I hear that you are going on an adventure. You go and dig up some treasure. Is it by chance that you want a companion for this journey? And would you be willing to share some of the treasure with me if I help you on this deed? Well, the wise old Viking who had lived a long life, he was in his 40s, he was raided Francia, he had raided England, and he had been all over the world. Well, the known world in his famous long ship, a dragon ship. But it's now got to the point where he's had enough of raiding. Let's face it, if you've been raiding for 20, 30 years and you got to the point where you're getting quite old in the beard, you may want to settle down and relax a bit and wait until that big final battle where you're going to die gloriously and be taken up to Valhal, or in the modern term, Valhalla. And so, you know, the man, and he has no name, agreed to this. He said, uh, all right then, what's your name? He said, oh, I'm Dave the Cat. I've heard of you. You're famous. Just like me. And so Dave sat down at the table. They drank some mead out of horn cups. And they settled down around the fire and fell asleep. And the very next morning, the stranger poached Dave. And Dave said, no, oh, you shouldn't really go around poking cats, you know, that's not a good idea. And the Viking apologised, I'm sorry, Dave. I won't do that again, but I'm ready to go now, I've set off. And so they left. And between them and the old burial mound, which had a big ditch around it, there was a ginormous mound. Some say that there was a longship inside, and some say there wasn't. By this time, it was hundreds of years old. They set off, but in between where they had to go, there was a massive wood. And so they set off on foot. They could not afford horses. And let's face it, you know, people liked walking in those days. It was good exercise. And they set off through the wood. And not long had they been in the wood, they got set upon by some, some robbers, some bandits. Oh, well, this Viking with a long beard and Dave fought them and killed all four of them. There was four bandits. They had a glorious death. But would they go to Valhalla being thieves? No, they'll be going to hell on the Hall of Thieves. Ha <laughs> ha, that'll teach them. And they set off again. Now they knew it would take a few days to walk through this wood, a very old and ancient wood. Now some people say that in this wood, the trees came alive at night and walked about. Well, Dave has never seen a walking tree at this point in the storytelling and his adventures, and perhaps in another adventure he may do. 
because we know them today as Ents from the Lord of the Rings. And it's a wonderful, amazing concept. Tree beard with his big beard coming alive, walking about. I like to think they actually exist in the modern world. But what do you think? And don't forget to subscribe. And so, you know, they set off and they came to a clearing in this wood. It was, it was two days into their journey. They got on halfway. They, they, got, they, you know, they probably walked a good 20, 30 leagues, you know, 20, 30 miles. And the Viking said, well, we need to camp here tonight. It's getting dark, Dave. And, you know, we need fire to keep warm. And so Dave got his little pouch out, got out his flint and steel and made a fire. He was excellent at making fires. And quite luckily, you know, Dave had some bread and cheese in his pouch and the Viking had some bacon already cooked and some beef and they ate well. And they wrapped themselves up in their cloaks and slept by the fire, which at that point was a roaring fire with lots of good logs on. And they woke up the next morning and there was a stranger standing next to him. He said, um, hey up, uh, hey up youth, what, what, what are you two doing? Oh, I said, we're on an adventure, stranger, to go to some mound over in that distance, two days away by foot. And he says, oh, not the mound with the dead warriors, is it? Oh, I've heard about that. Oh, don't go there, guys. Don't go there, Dave. He knew, by this time he knew his name. He said, Dave, whatever you do, don't go to that mound. But if you do, you must go at night and have a torch lit with flame. That will protect you from the Draugar or the Atlaganga, the above walker. Because the undead is not a new thing. It is a Viking thing. Oh, Vikings invented some great things like me and undead warriors. It does remind me of that scene in the, uh, in, you know, in the Norseman when he enters the barrow and the dead king comes alive in his dreams and he fights him. That marvellous film! But I've already seen it once. Not a plug. And now they set off again. Two days they walked. Again, the night they found another clearing and they made another fire and they had some more bacon and cheese. And the next morning they reached the area where the mound was. In fact, they could see it in the distance. It was very, very large indeed. Dave turned round to the man. He said, oh, oh, I've never seen a mound like that. And the man said, well, me neither. Imagine what treasures we're going to find. Oh, but we need a spade, Dave. And so Dave got his axe out and found a good log and he, and he made a log. It took him a couple of hours. He made, he actually made a spade, not a log. And so Dave set about with that, with his axe, and he, and he made a spade out of this wooden log. A wonderful spade. Spades in those days were made of wood, not like today when we've got a metal spade. And so they decided to sit down and make a plan. And so we must listen to that stranger's advice, and we must go at night. I will make two torches up. And the, the old man, he, he tore out a bit of his you know, his tunic and wrapped it round, you know, the um, wood stake. And in his little bag, he had a little leather sack with fat in and he covered it all in fat. And they walked closer to the mound and they made a fire so they could light the torches. Dave had the spade and a torch in one hand and the Viking had a torch and his sword ready just in case something supernatural appeared. Well the Viking with the long white beard, perhaps it's Odin or perhaps it's not. We will never know. And of course Woden to the English. They said well let's go to the top of the mound and we'll dig into it and we'll see what we find. And so the Viking was much bigger than Dave and the spade that Dave made was too big for him. So he stood guard. He had a little axe and his torch lit and the Viking started to dig down. He started to dig and dig and dig. All night they dug. It was getting to the point it was about three in the morning. That time in the morning when strange things happen. And they heard a growling and a rumbling and a strange, strange noise. 
Well, the Viking said, well, what do you think that is, Dave? Oh, I don't know. It don't sound good to me. We must get ready and get our weapons ready. And suddenly, out of the hole, an horrible hand and arm appeared. And then another one. And this old Viking warrior, an undead Draugar, started to dig himself out. And he was growling, I'm going to get you. He's digging me up. But something a bit strange happened. Because as Dave was thinking what to do, he got his torture and the Draugr got set alight and, well, burnt to death in a horrible and burning fire. As you could see, not a nice way to go. Now luckily for them, the burial mound was for one person and that was the king that came out of the mound and was now a pile of ashes on the floor. Reminds me of playing Skyrim in a way. And Dave and the Viking continued to dig, or the Viking dig, and Dave watched with his torch. And they found a large chest. It had silver coins and gold coins. It had bracelets and necklaces. There were swords and axes. And both Dave and the Viking, well, they were very wealthy. And I said, what are we going to do, Dave? There's too much treasure. I said, I know. We'll go to the wood over there and we'll bury a load. You know, we'll bank it just in case. We'll hoard it away and we'll take what we can. You can have that sword. I'll have the magic hat and we'll both be happy. And this is what they did. They separated the treasure. They buried some in an old bit of wood by a tree. And Dave remembered where it was. And one day he went back for it. And as for the old Viking... Well, he got his wish, because the year after, the summer after this happened, a large battle happened, and the Viking died in the glorious way that the Viking should do, with his sword in hand and his shield, and he was taken up to Valhall, the hall of the undead Viking warriors. And he had a good seat at the table next to Egil Thorson, and he could see Odin himself in his throne and I do hope you've enjoyed this story which I made up live on camera because as a storyteller, as a folkloricist, I had the ability to do that and I do hope you enjoy it. It's goodbye from me, goodbye from my sword, goodbye from my Franciscan axe and we'll see you in the next tale. Hey, I'm going now to make a cup of tea because I'm British. Hey, hey! Did you like that? <sighs> so many hills. Ah, well, at least I've got the gold. Wee! Stay groovy. Here lies Ragnar Thurber Bridges. I wonder if he's famous. Egil Thorson, stay groovy. Never heard of him. Dread Pirate Pete, ye sunk regularly, but it were a puddle that got me. I hope that was a joke. Welcome to Northworthy Sagas and Stories. Please subscribe and also click on the notification bell. Thank you for watching.